guys, good morning. I wanted to actually talk to you guys a little bit about why I don't let fair be off leash. Um, a few days ago, I had posted something on Instagram asking if, you know, maybe some trainers or there's some people who had experience with this would reach out and just let me know if it would be safe for Farabee to be using a harness with her long line to play. Everyone said yes, that would be safe. But what I didn't expect was I had people who actually were like messaging me saying that her dog should be able to be off leash and a few things like that. So I wanted to talk about that today, but let me put Farabee's sunglasses on her really quick. Also, leave a comment and let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about specifically as far as go in more detail, either on my opinion or whatever with service talk stuff. I'm happy to talk to you guys and give you my opinion. And of course it is just an opinion, but I feel like sometimes hearing people's opinions does help validate. All right, so why is Fairby not allowed off leash? We have a leash law where I live. It doesn't mean that people don't let their dogs off leash, but it means that I'm gonna abide by that rule. Um, the dogs don't have to be on a leash if they're in your yard, but the fact is I know for sure that my dog would consider going out of my yard. That is not appropriate at all. There are just so many things that could turn bad quickly, and so I can never let her off. I just can't. We don't have a place where it's appropriate for her to be off leash, and I'm not interested to see if she'll listen. We do have a long line, and I'll link it below. It's 100 feet long. She can run our whole entire yard. We don't have trees in our yard in the front. We have trees, obviously, back here, but we don't have trees in our front yard. We don't have anything for her to get tangled on, which is perfect. That's enough to play ball. That's enough to have fun. I don't feel like she needs anything else. Even on the best day where I feel like I could trust, there's also that part of me that's like, what if I make the wrong decision? It's my job to keep her safe. I just feel like there's always that little bit of unknown. Like it could be a dog. It could be a snake. It could be a cat. It could, you know, there could be things that would come up and either grab her attention to the point where I can't grab her attention back. I mean, she's a dog. And that's the other thing too. Guys, she is a dog. And poodles are actually bred to hunt. So, although, I mean, we see this fluff, she is still a dog. She still has those instincts to like run and hunt. And poodles are bird dogs. So, you know, I mean, that is what they do. That brings me to my other point. I think it's easier to stop things before it starts than it is to repair that. So if I feel like I could let her run and see what happens and trust the recall and trust the e-collar and all this stuff, but the thing is, what happens if, number one, what happens if she chases a cat or a squirrel and it's the best thing ever? Because it would be so fun. I mean, it would be fun, you know? It's gonna be so much harder for me to backtrack off of that and for me to say, okay, you did that and it was so fun for you. It was like the best thing ever and now you can never do that again. It's gonna make her drive so much stronger for her to do that. Also, people train differently. So of course, I'm positive there's gonna be dog trainers who disagree with me on this. There's also the element of what if something happened and she got hurt? Because that's something I can't deal with. Kind of on that same note, because Fairby is cute apparently, I mean, I think she's adorable, but apparently she's appealing to the general public. So we have a lot of people who pull up next to us in their cars and talk to her. It pisses me off to no end but the thing is, it has taught her that cars are friendly, which could absolutely be deadly for her. She wasn't ever afraid of cars. She was, it's sunny again, hold on. So she was never afraid of cars, but she had a different respect for them than since we've moved to a place where a ton of people stop. I mean, I bet you we get stopped two times a week at least with people pulling up beside us while we're walking and them talking to her and telling her, oh, aren't you a cute puppy? Oh, you're so pretty, oh, look at you and stuff. And the thing is, Fairby loves attention and she loves people. And whenever people do that and they're talking to her from a car, I've noticed just a peak in her curiosity whenever a car comes by now, you know, since all this has started to where she looks, like she looks at the cars and oh my gosh, there's a bee like straight right here. Oh my gosh. 
I've noticed that it piques her interest and at what point is she gonna think that the car that drives by is a friend and go after it? You know, I mean, that's not, or I don't know. There's just too many things. There's just too many things. There's just too many. It's just too much, honestly. There's no way that I feel comfortable with her off leash. That was a super long story to tell you why, but I just feel like making my point on this is potentially something that could help somebody. It's B, man. Okay, hold on, that bee's trying to touch us. That bee's trying to touch us. Holy oh, shit. <laughs> like checking on me because my heart rate went up. <laughs> I guess that's why. She's like, what's wrong with you? I'm just trying to lay back down. Ugh. All right, Um, there was a bee, so we had to. I thought you were loving me. Are you trying to scratch your face? Are you itching your face? I thought she was loving me. And she's scratching her face, I think. Okay. Anyways, um, basically there's just a lot of unknowns that I can't control and I just feel like it's in my best interest for my mental health for her to be on a leash because that is something I can control. I can control the outcome that way. Um, and then this kind of brings me to my next point. Fairy does have an e-collar. I feel like we've trained with that a lot. Um, I try to train with that pretty frequently as far as pressing it and her coming to me to get a cookie, whatever. I just feel like it's my job 100%, no matter what, it's my job to keep her safe. It's also my job to do what I need to do, do what's best for my mental health. That bee, I'm sorry guys, that bee is like straight up, like right here, it keeps coming near me. It's just basically, I feel like in everyone's best interest for her to be on a leash. But I felt like I needed to make this video because I had people question like, well, if isn't she a service dog, service dogs should be able to be off leash and all this stuff. So my disability has nothing to do with Fear Be working on or off leash. We have practiced a few things off leash in public before as far as her doing um, crowd control and we've practiced just like seeing if she will stay with me in public in stores where there's small town stores and the people know us and it's like you know totally not a real big deal. Um, but I wouldn't take her to like, let's say Disney and let her be off leash working. Like that, for our team, that is not appropriate. We don't need that. But that doesn't mean other teams don't need that because you have service dog teams who, number one, you have different dog personalities to where maybe, maybe they work great off leash. My dog's not that dog and that's fine. But my dog doesn't have to be that dog because my dog doesn't need to be off leash to work. So there's that. And it doesn't mean the service dog team who has perfect recall and can be off leash, it doesn't mean that they need to be off leash either. Um, maybe their disability doesn't call for that, but maybe it does. It also doesn't mean that every dog who is trained for service work, who the person needs an off leash dog, it doesn't mean their dog is gonna be a good off leash dog either. So, I mean, you can have all these things and still not match up. So it depends on the dog. It depends on your disability. And, you know, I, I feel like there's factors that go into it. And also, the other reason I want to make stuff like this and let you guys know, like, real life, like, for real how it is with me is because I feel like a lot of service dog teams out there, I've noticed that, uh, thank you, a lot of times, particularly in the mental health community, stuff like that can really take you down because you feel like your dog isn't living up to what you see other dogs on the internet doing or what you hear a perfectly trained dog will do. Every dog is different. So that's why I want to share like real life and real like, yeah, no, Fairbury is not an off leash dog. She's not. She's a service dog. She helps me. She helps me medically, but she is not a good off leash dog. And that's fine. That doesn't make her any less valid of a service dog for my disability. She's also really good at blocking the camera. There's a bee and so she feels, she knows there's something going on that I'm worried about. So she's like standing up and helping me, which is adorable. So I also wanna clarify, I didn't feel like I owed anybody an explanation by any means. I just wanted to clarify because I do think that there's a lot of teams out there who feel like their dog has to be perfect on every single thing. You know, that's not realistic. Your dog has to be well behaved in public, leash manners, housebroken, not touching everything, not greeting everyone they pass, being cool with dogs around them, 
being good with kids, being okay with strangers running up and touching them because that does happen. I'm not saying that's appropriate. I'm just saying your dog should be okay with that because it does happen. Um, being able to just, you know, be in a sit, stay, down, stay, stand, stay, whatever for long periods of time, not try to grab food. There's a lot of things that service dog needs to have that are definitely like a broad umbrella thing that I'll say umbrella. This is my umbrella. <laughs> There's like a lot of things that are like an umbrella term that service dogs need to all have. Being off leash is not one of them. There's a ton of things that your service dog needs to have, by the way. I just kind of condensed the list. And also you have to have a disability and your dog has to be task trained to help you with that disability. I couldn't have picked a worse color shirt. <laughs> or a worse day as far as the weather changing goes, but I wanted to talk to you guys and I just felt like this was really important. So with that being said, I hope this was helpful for you guys. And I hope that if you're a person who felt like maybe you were invalidated by your dog not being good off leash um, and you don't need that for a task for your dog. It doesn't interfere with your disability. I hope this brings you a little bit of comfort. Thank you guys so much for watching. So leave a comment and let me know if your dog is good off leash or not. And we will see you really soon. Bye, guys.